Hello and welcome back to another episode of Handloader TV. And in this episode, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be comparing the 28 Nosler to the seven millimeter Remington Magnum cartridges. Now, I should point out right out the gate, we've done individual videos covering this seven millimeter Remington Magnum and this 28 Nosler. We covered load development and all that. So if you haven't already checked out those videos, be sure to do so now. And there'll be a link for those in the description so you can watch them and see the individual results for both of these rifles. But in this video, we'll be mostly comparing ballistics. Since we already have a baseline for accuracy with both both of these rifles. We're going to take these rifles, work up a, uh, a good load from the previous videos. We'll take that load, we'll shoot it at distance, probably out to 600 yards, and we'll compare the two ballistically. So it'll be really neat. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with the 28 Nosler, and we'll talk about the cartridge itself. It is based off the 404 Jeffrey, so it's a very large case, and it is a beltless Magnum cartridge, and we'll have some cartridge art up here so you can kind of get an idea for them comparing it to the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. And right out the gate, the two most notable difference I would say is that the seven millimeter Remington Magnum has a belt because it's based off the 375 H and H Magnum. So it is a belted Magnum as to where the 28 Nosler is a beltless Magnum. Also, when you look at the shoulders, you will see that the 28 Nosler has a desirable 35 degree shoulder angle as to where the 7 millimeter Remington Magnum has a 25 degree shoulder. Now, how much of a factor that plays is an age old debate and I don't want to get into it on this video, but there are notable differences. Also, when it comes to case capacity, I took a measurement of both the 28 and the 7 Rem Mag and looking at the 28 Nosler, the case capacity using 80G cases, same cases we'll be using in our test and in the previous video, on an average of five cases, the water capacity was 91.2 grains for the 28 Nosler. And for the seven millimeter Remington Magnum, I took a measurement, five cases again, these are Norma cases, same we used in previous video and we'll be using in this video, and it measured 86.86 grains. So pretty interesting there when it comes to the differences in case capacity. And it actually wasn't quite as much as I thought it would be, but there is definitely an advantage to the 28 Nosler. Now on that note, I'd like to go ahead and jump over to the load that we'll be using. We'll be using the same load that we used in both the videos for the 7 Rem Mag and the 28 Nosler. And we'll be using the same bullet. The bullet is a 175 grain burger. And for the Nosler, we're using H1000 powder, a 77 grain charge with a Federal 215M primer, 80G cases. And we'll have that listed there so you can see that. For the 7 Rem Mag, it's that same 175 grain burger, but we swapped over to Hodgdon Rotumbo powder, a 68.5 grain charge with the same Federal 215 match primer, Magnum primer. So really, very comparable loads here. If you look at the standard deviations and the extreme spread and the velocity numbers, they're pretty close. As a matter of fact, the velocity here is only 79 feet per second difference. So not a whole lot. I also went ahead and looked on the Burger website for load data there with the 175 grain Elite Hunter and a max load for the 7 Rem Mag using the getting the highest velocity possible and a max load for the 28 Nosler getting the highest velocity possible. It was only a difference of 125 feet per second. So it's really interesting to see the difference between the two and I can't wait to take these guys out to the range. And if you want to see the load development and the individual accuracy of both of these rifles, check out those separate videos. We cover all that. You don't want to miss out when it comes to the information. So lastly, we've had both these rifles for some time now, and I've had a lot of time behind both of them. This Nosler's got probably around 400 rounds through it now, and this uh, 7 Rem Mag, I've probably put somewhere around two, maybe 300 rounds through it. So I've got a really good feel for them. They're both accurate half MOA rifles when I do my part with a good load. Both of these loads shot about half MOA through each of the rifles. And they're, they're great rifles. I really like the stock on this 7 Rem Mag. Uh, this 28 Nosler is a lightweight. It only weighs seven pounds compared to the 10 pounds of this rifle. 
But of course, what we're going to be doing is more about ballistics. So on that note, let's go ahead and take these guys out to the range and see what we can do with them. So as you can see, we're out on the range now and we have steel set up at various different yardages. The first target we're going to shoot is going to be at 200 yards and we're going to shoot the 7mm Remington Magnum first. And the load we're going to be using for this rifle is 68.5 grains of Hodgdon Rotumbo powder with a 175 grain Berger Elite Hunter bullet, Norma cases, Federal 215M primers, and an overall loaded length of 3.470 inches. This is the best load that we used in the previous load development video on the 7 Rem Mag. So let's go ahead and see if I can hit it. All of our ballistics, we're going to be using this Kestrel 5700 here. I'm going to take a measurement of the wind, which is at 8 miles an hour. And according to this, I'm going to have to hold a minute and a half of elevation because we're zeroed at 100 yards. So let's see if I can hit the target, put a little bit of a group on there. And I got a trusty spotter back there to help walk me in the target if I need it. All right, here we go. <laughs> well, 200 is almost too easy with this rifle. All right, so we swapped over from the 7mm Remington Magnum over to the 28 Nosler. And the load we're using for this rifle is a 77 grain charge of H1000 powder with the same 175 grain Berger Elite Hunter bullet. ADG cases, Federal 215M primers, and our overall loaded length is 3.3950 inches. And this was the best load that we worked up in our 28 Nosler video. So we're going to see how it does at distance and compares to the 7 Rem Mag. So the target's at 200, and let's see what kind of group I can get. There we go. <laughs> that that packs punch. Oh, killed the gong. <laughs> I guess there is a little bit of a difference between the 28 nozzler and the 7 rem mag. Well, it's not handloader TV if you don't break the target at least once, so we've reset it and we're going to put our third round on target now. Here we go. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's impressive. You know, the load, this, they're shooting the same bullet. I, I'm surprised. You can actually hear it. There's a, there's a bit of an energy difference there. I'm excited to crunch the numbers. Now we're back to the 7 Rem Mag. Target's down there at 400 yards. And I've dialed up 5 and 3 quarters minutes on the elevation. And I'm going to go ahead and hold for windage here, which should be less than a minute. And my spotter's ready. So let's see what we can do.
think that was right over the top. Might have dialed a little bit much on that. I'm gonna hold bottom of the plate. Sounded like a hit, about four inches from the top. Okay. Let's see if we can get a three shot group on there. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. So if this hits a little bit lower, it's cause I'm holding a little bit lower. Here we go. I get an impressive amount of dust from that. Right in the center? All right, we got a center hit. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that is such a satisfying sound. That is awesome. All right, so we've swapped over to the 28 Nosler and the target is at 400 yards now. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with this rifle. I've went ahead and dialed five minutes of elevation in, and my spotter's over here. He's gonna walk me into the target if need be. Here we go. Sounded like a solid hit right in the center. Sweet. Right. So we got a little bit of uh, windage here. Wind's picking up. I'm gonna hold a little bit left. To the left, okay, I held too far to the left. That 28 Nosler hits with some force. I tell you what, <laughs> that target is at 400 yards and it still killed it. So once again, we've had to reset the 400 yard target. It's back up now and we're gonna put our last round on target now. So here we go. I just saw a steel plate flip and I don't see it no more. I think it's hanging on by a thread. But there's three rounds on target. All right, so now the target is at 600 yards and we got the seven rem mag. We'll put a, see if we can't put three shots on it. Here we go. Gonna hold a little bit left for wind. High. All right. Pretty center. All right. So, I'm going to maintain that little bit of left and I'm going to hold the bottom of the plate here. There she is. <laughs> 
Now we're getting a little bit of a delay in that beautiful sound of bullet striking steel. <laughs> that is so satisfying to watch. One more. <laughs> that last shot might have been me a little bit, but pretty happy with that. So as you can see, we've swapped back over to the 28 Nosler. The target's downrange at 600 yards. And we're gonna see if we can't get three rounds on that target. Hopefully it doesn't break on us this time. I've dialed up about 10, well, nine and three quarter minutes. So let's see if we can get a first round impact. Keep our fingers crossed here. I'm going to hold a little bit left for wind. Wow. <laughs> this 28, it just plain kills the target. All right, so we've gone ahead and reset the target because the 28 Nosler just keeps killing them. But it's still at 600 yards, so let's see if we can get at least one, hopefully, two more hits on it. Here we go. Good hit. All right, let's see if we can't do that one more time. Left. Got some wind. <laughs> oh, that is such a satisfying sound. It never gets old. So we're back at the bench now after a great day at the range, breaking steel and just, just hammering it out to 600 yards. And it was a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed shooting both these rifles. And I must say, I, you know, getting right back here and thinking about it, I have a newfound respect for both of these cartridges. They're both very capable and very accurate rifles and cartridges. So on that note, let me walk you through what we've gone ahead and done since then. I used my Kestrel 5700 here to calculate all of the ballistics while we were out in the field. Then I went ahead and I trued it up, which you can actually do in the, with this Kestrel. It allows you to kind of fine tune and make sure that your bullets are actually flying exactly as the Kestrel saying. You can true up your ballistics. And it goes beyond the scope of this video to explain how to do that, but it's a fairly simple process actually. 
And I went ahead and took that information and I put it on some graph paper and I graphed it out and I have the velocity, the energy, and the bullet drop for each of these cartridges in a graph which we'll be able to show to you so it's a little bit easier to digest and to understand. So going ahead and looking at this graph, there's only a 79 feet per second difference between these two rifles. And I also should note the 7 Rem Mag has a little bit of a leg up on the 28 Nosler because it is a 26 inch barrel. That was incorrectly stated in the video. Check the editor's note in the description of the video and you'll see that it's actually a 26 inch barrel, not a 24. And the 28 Nosler has a 24 inch barrel. So a little bit shorter. On that note though, it's 79 feet per second difference between the two rifles, you can see the bullet drop here. And what I found is really interesting as you look at these graphs, take special note to the bullet drop, the velocity, but I think most importantly and most evident in our video is the amount of energy between the two. Now at 200 yards, the 28 Nosler has a 162 foot-pounds more energy than the 7mm Remington Magnum. And based on how well those gongs held up, I think that's pretty evident. And that 162 foot-pounds is a lot more significant than what most people give it credit for. And I have shot those gongs with my 280 Ackley Improved, my 6.5 Creedmoor, my 22-250, my 30-06. I shoot those gongs a ton. You can see it. They're worn out. They're, they're dinged up. You know, there's just a fresh coat of paint on them, and that's it. And I never had any issues with the hardware breaking. But I actually had some carabiners on there, and that seemed to be the weak link there. That 28 Nosler was breaking them. But it didn't break for the 7 Rem Mag, which I found very interesting. And I think that's the, just the difference in energy between the two cartridges. So now you can see the entire data for yourself. You can crunch the numbers. You can look at the graphs. You can look at the load data. And be sure to take it all in when you analyze this stuff, you know, keep in mind the 28 Nosler did outperform the 7mm Remington Magnum slightly, but at what cost? It does burn more powder. The barrel life is going to be a little bit less. Just speaking from experience, the 28 Nosler is definitely a little bit harder on throats than the 7 Rem Mag. So there really is no clear-cut answer. My advice to you is figure out what you want, analyze the data so you can make an educated decision for yourself, and pick the cartridge that's most appealing and fits your needs and your purpose perfectly. So on that note, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun putting this together. We tried to get it as close to an apples to apples comparison as humanly possible, but of course it is not perfect. And don't forget to let us know if you like this video by giving us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. And if you have any questions, personal experience, you want to know any details about the rifles, loads, whatever it may be, be sure to leave us a comment below. I do my best to read and respond to every one of those. Thank you so much, and I will catch you guys in the next episode. <music>